Hello, we're at Battersea Arts Centre, where the Grand Hall is filled with artists, easels, paint solvent and undiluted terror. It can only mean one thing, it's Portrait Artist of the Year. Of the nine artists awarded a place in today's heat, four are professional. Sarita Mahajan, Rosso Spotto, Eugenie Vronskaya and Ryan Jowett. I have never once timed myself to see how long I take, so I don't know if four hours is enough. If it's too much, I don't know, but we'll see. And joining them are five amateur artists. Londona Evans, Wayne Fallon, Allegra Wilder, Emma Pyle, and Ian Legg. I'm most anxious about just getting a likeness. If I do that, I think I'll be relatively happy. Whatever their approach, today's artists will have to create the best portraits they can in a strict four-hour time limit. I don't often do four-hour portraits. It's just a bit conscious of the time. They'll have to prove they have the courage. I feel like I'm not on track, no. <laughs> I'm just going to keep going. And the creativity if they want to attract the attention of our illustrious judges. I never paint this small. So you've really set yourself a challenge. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to do something completely different. And there's a stunning prize at stake, a £10,000 commission to paint international ballet icon Carlos Acosta for the Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery. So, as the pressure mounts... I am lost. ..and the deadline approaches... Jesus Christ, Ryan. Who's got what it takes to earn a place in the semi-final? I'm risking it because of the time. I like yeah. a bit of jeopardy as much as the next person, <laughs> but I might be pushing it. As the artists prepare their materials, the judges take a closer look at the self-portraits that earned them their place here today. So we have nine self-portraits. Let's have a look at the first one. Someone has stolen my look. <laughs> I mean, you're immediately struck by this, aren't you, with the costume, the What nudity. costume? Yeah, the, yeah <laughs> the tattoo. But I think all of that falls away quite quickly when you look at the face. You know, this is a real statement painting. On to the next one. It really is a study of scrutinising the self, but in doing so, having a certain expression of the artist at work. I really like the square format, and if you look at his forehead, it's not really there, it's disappearing. Yeah. I'm really taken by his, actually. I like to see someone take chances with colour, and I think it sort of sets them apart. I really like the expression. They've had a long night, and they're reassuring you <laughs> that they're just about all right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, we very rarely get an entire figure, and to see them squished into this painting feels expansive, but it also feels very tight. It's technically very proficient. I'm interested in this next portrait. It feels elongated. Well, there's a sort of Mogdiliani sort of great long neck or Giacometti. I'm not completely adverse to the signature for once. It's like a caterpillar crawling up his shoulder. <laughs> Thanks. You're really spoiled. <laughs> I don't like it anymore. <laughs> I love our artists. You know, we ask them to give us a self-portrait. They've got to come up with some way of making it interesting yeah. to attract our attention. And, you know, this does it perfectly, yeah. and it's a good portrait as well. Not a signature, but a number and a date. I really love this one. That shadow is just absolutely magnificent. But what makes it is the unfinished background, and actually it feels very contemporary because of that unfinishedness. We move on to a monochrome. That and what he's wearing make me feel like we're watching a sort of scientist in the 50s, maybe. <laughs> I think what works so well is the attention to detail from the corner scene to the knitting on the jumper. I think it's full of story for something so tiny. It's a grenade. And finally, very up close and personal. I love seeing the fingertips just pushed up against the cheeks like that. It's really that we get the sense of the weight of mm. flesh and its consistency, and it is masterfully done as well. Well, that's a wall full of character and full of talent. Mm. I can't wait to see what they get up to today. Ready to make a start, all our artists are missing 
is their sitter. Artists, your sitter today is as comfortable playing a ruthless assassin in Bloodlands as a lovable hobbit from Middle Earth. But this is no time for cold feet. Today is all about the face. Please welcome James Nesbitt. <laughs> Welcome. Hi. Now, if I was drawing up a list of people who would be good at sitting still for four hours, you would not be on that list. I mean, I'm terrible. God only knows how I'll manage to do this, but I'm but very excited nevertheless. Have you had your portrait painted before? I have a Northern Irish artist called Colin Davidson. Fabulous artist. He uh, painted me, Merkel and Brad Pitt. You know, so. Oh, there we go. The, and the um, Queen, actually. Well, the, the famous four. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, artists, I'm going to leave you to pose James in a way that works for you all. Thanks, Thank Thanks. How would you naturally sit in that chair? I mean, ideally, I'd be sitting like this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, we're probably just like that. That's lovely. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah. How's that? Yeah. Yeah. Just do that. <laughs> Artists, your sitter today is a legendary fashion designer and artist. Her provocative, iconic pieces have been worn by everyone from Debbie Harry to Rihanna. Please clear the runway for head turning fashion rebel. Dr. Pam Hogg. Hello. Hello. How are you? Please have a seat. Thank you. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good a bit nervous. <laughs> you're nervous? Yeah. Now, you're used to, I suppose, as a fashion designer, you're used to being in control of the process. Is this going to be hard, hard for you to give over control? No, actually. You're going to be I'm running around really and going. looking forward to doing Nothing. <laughs> uh, well, I will leave you to pose, Pam. Thank you. How would you like me? <laughs> well, I'd like you to look at me. That's She's got quite a lot of hair, hair and yeah, over her face, so, so I don't we've got to do the face. compromise. So maybe here. Yeah. Okay. Artists, most of us spend our teens choosing which bands to follow, but your sitter established her own musical career at just 13. She won the BBC's Sound of 2017, which was unprecedented for an unsigned act. Please welcome rising R&B star, Ray Black. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good, thank you. Have How a seat. You? Thank you. Wow. Oh. I hope we don't get the weather you're expecting. <laughs> <laughs> It frames your face beautifully. Thank I love you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Do you know how you're going to fill the time? Do you know what? I think I'm just going to try and do some meditation. Can I take a nap? As long as you stay perfectly still with your eyes open. <laughs> <laughs> so, artist, I will leave Ray in your capable hands. See you later. Do you want the hood? Yeah, yeah I want like the hood because I thought Come it would look really cool. Yeah, I do. In the picture. Do I need to take it down? I'm happy with it. Do what you want. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> <decided>. <laughs> Artists, you may have been practicing, but this time it's for real. You have four hours to complete your portraits, and your time starts now. You're nearly finished. <laughs> While the artists establish composition with the help of their phones... Your nails are incredible. Oh, thank you. ..or with preliminary sketches... This hand here, would it be possible just to pop it on the leg slightly? Would that work for you? Is that OK? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's fine. Yeah. One artist has captured a little shot of their sitter, which has given them a big idea. Normally, I do really, really close-ups of a face, but on this occasion, I'm going to position her a little smaller, but have the really dramatic background. Emma Pyle from London works as a theatre design assistant, making technical drawings of scenery. So it's no surprise that it's what's behind the sitter that has caught her attention today. Emma, this is one of my favourite sets of all time. I love how you've immediately begun to tackle it. The thing that makes me really curious is how you're going to attack Pam. Is she going to be as small as the photograph you've taken? Yes, I think she will be. Wow. But 
I'm hoping that her personality and everything will come through. I never paint this small, but I'm not afraid of a challenge. <laughs> You're going to do something completely different. OK, I love that you've set yourself this very different challenge. The only artist not working with paints today is hoping that a change of materials will help her do justice to her celebrity sitter. Londona? Yeah? How are you going to paint me? What are you using? So I'm using pastels. OK. So I know a lot of people are using oil paints, but I don't think I could paint you beautifully in four hours. It's just <laughs> really hard. So yeah. I can do it a little bit faster with pastels, and I hope I can... Uh, make you look good. <laughs> That's my main concern. <laughs> Former retail manager Londona Evans is studying portraiture at Heatherley's School of Fine Art in London. Her self-portrait in oils took 25 hours to complete. I try to work from the top down to the bottom because with pastels you get the fallout and if you've got dark parts like the hair that obviously can dirty it and muddy it. Do you know, her striking elements, her eyes, so I really hope I portray her eyes as beautiful as they actually look in real life, because they are gorgeous. I'm taking risks. I started with a different approach to my usual. I decided to quickly find the portrait directly using the paint instead of sketching it. If it doesn't work, it might be just a mess. Sicilian-born Rosso Spotto took part in Portrait Artist of the Year 2019. She says the experience taught her to be more fearless and experimental in her work. Rosso, I can see you're actually drawing in with, what is it, chalks on top of yeah. what you've already painted in. Yeah, I'm trying to find some key marks. Because uh, the paint is still a little bit loose, doing it with the charcoal helps me. So you're looking for definition? And likeness. OK. I love the pose and the position of the head and the scale of the canvas, so well done. I've primed the surface and now I'm laying down a coloured ground just to create a nice contrast. I use coloured grounds on monochrome um, because what, what it does is it enhances the tones and especially where you get the little brush marks, sometimes there's little gaps and then the hues from the ground show through. Wayne Fallon is an art teacher from Chesterfield. Despite his submission's compact size, the judges were struck by its attention to detail and its intensity. This is a really beautiful start, this bold green colour. Um, you've reached me at an impasse. I think I'm going to start again. What? Because I'm happy with the colour, but I had to include the hand, and it's not working. And I think I've got another solution that would include the hand, but a different composition. Well, don't leave me hanging. What is the solution? Well, it would be a diptych, oh. two, two smaller pieces. Oh, well, OK, that's really yeah. So, two portraits, head, hand. I think. Wow. Well, I know, I'm, Good man, Ian. I know, but I'm risking it because of the time. Yeah. I mean, I do enjoy the programme and I like yeah. a bit of jeopardy as much as the next person, <laughs> but I might be pushing it. I really feel like I have to let you get on with this, but I'm going to come back really soon and see what happens. <laughs> Cheers. The artists are almost one hour into their four hour challenge. I don't often do four hour portraits, so it's just a bit conscious of the time now. I'm very tempted to get the socks in, but hopefully there'll be enough colour elsewhere. Four hours is a stretch to produce one piece of art. Today I've decided to do three, so it's <laughs> quite a challenge. Here at Battersea Arts Centre, nine artists are one hour into painting sitters James Nesbitt, Pam Hogg, and Ray Black. As if completing a portrait in four hours isn't challenging enough, one artist has decided to forego a plan in favour of a more impulsive approach. I tend to do a little bit of a sketch first, but I very rarely keep inside the guidelines. Normally the drawing just gets completely lost. I'm winging it, basically. 
Ryan Jowett is a professional artist from Margate. The elongated proportions of his self-portrait in oils were accidental, an approach quite typical of this 23-year-old. Ryan, a white heat of energy coming off you here. How are you finding this experience? Um, I don't know. I'm probably just overthinking the time <laughs> limit and my head has just gone into rush mode immediately. It's a great start. I just want to reassure you. Thank you. <laughs> at the moment, you've got a close-up of Ray on your phone. Will yeah. there be a point when you look at Ray and check out things? Or... That's probably what I should be doing. I think I'm rushing too quickly and in the rush of it, I'm losing the likeness. It's all right. We'll see how we do later on down the line. All right. Can you just for one second move that? Okay, yeah. Pam is a great city. She's been holding her pose really well. It's very interesting the way she sits. She comes out of the chair. That sort of blackness together with this kind of <laughs> burst of color emerges from that black. Russian-born Eugenie Vronskaya moved to the UK aged 22. She takes regular commissions, as well as teaching abstract painting at a fine art college in London. You know, your self-portrait is fantastic. It felt almost as if you were just painting it for yourself. And there were marks on it, dates and numbers. So I paint my self-portrait every birthday since I was 13. Oh, my goodness. I give myself anything between two to four hours, depending on the day. Wow. How has your style changed over those 40 years? I mean, it's definitely evolved and changed, but you can see me right through. Yeah. You always had the signature way of painting. I think so. Well, this is a lovely, big, large canvas. She's really emerging. I'm really, really excited Thank about you. this. That's well very done. encouraging. Thank you. You're using these incredible bright colours, pink to start with. I also don't know what colour it will end up. It's just okay. kind of just layering until it looks right. Looking at her eyeshadow, that's quite striking, and I kind of want that to inform the rest of the colours that go on it. Allegra Wilder from London has recently qualified as an architect. The thumbs up in her submission is an attempt to show off her sarcastic side. What we loved about your self-portrait was the perspective that you gave us with the slightly surreally large yeah. hand. Are you going to sort of play around with that? I wanted to, and I asked Ray if she could put her hand kind of near her face, because I usually draw hands more like in the foreground. It pushes the face back, yeah. doesn't it? It gives you that sort of distance. Yeah. It's a great start. Look forward oh. to seeing how it develops. Thank you. <laughs> The sets behind today's sitters pay tribute to famous artists, each connected by a common theme. Kathleen, I'm loving the backgrounds today. There's so much colour. Well, you've hit the nail on the head today. We're looking at colour. And we've got this fantastic sort of 18th century red behind James, behind Pam. We've got a, a colour that sort of celebrates the work of Matisse. And behind Ray, we've got a nod to uh, Warhol's lovely pop art. So it's all about colour. If I was having my portrait painted, I think I'd want a background like James has here. Well, you'd often see portraits by Singer Sargent or by Van Dyke with this fantastic red velvet curtain or stormy skies in, in the distance, and that's exactly what this has captured. I love my background. It's as close as I've got to Game of Thrones. I mean, it seems very kind of opulent or something, my background, which, of course, I'm not. <laughs> it's been a tough year. <laughs> Pam here, yeah. very generous in the way she's sitting because she's putting a lot of concentration and energy into it. It's not easy to sit like that yeah, all day. Yeah, my, my back's aching just watching it. She's sitting beautifully and the colours bring her to the foreground but also relate to the background. So we have this kind of harmonious sort of discourse between background and figure and I'm hoping it's affecting the portraits we're going to see today. The lady to my right 
the angle I was at was not as great for her as she wanted, so she kept asking me to look to the side, and it felt uncomfortable. It's like it felt a bit shifty. <laughs> Ray's been true to form as a musician. She's been humming and singing, and she's, yeah. she's doing well as yeah, a Yeah, I want to see that energy in these paintings. The colours here, though, I have to say, I'm not sure if I was staring at them for four hours that <laughs> I would be that pleased. Yeah, I think that's really cool, though, because you've got a young sitter. You know, Ray's very vibrant. Her music is fantastic. She hopefully will really be contextualised in something which is young and dynamic. It's actually been really relaxing, really peaceful, just being able to listen to music, yeah, and just see people at work, really, like, making amazing art. Whether to feature today's backdrops is the choice of the artist to make. And with so much to think about, from colours to composition, having a sitter who makes one of those decisions for you is a welcome perk. James has taken a pose which is vertical and then goes on a nice sweep down towards the corner. So um, my composition is echoing that. Ian Legg is a part-time college art technician from Maidenhead. A self-confessed perfectionist, Ian has been known to complete up to 11 versions of a painting before he's satisfied with it. Ian, we loved your self-portrait. You know, I love the way in which you sort of constructed the head as well, and I can see you're doing the same thing here. Yeah, These dibby dabby yeah. little, like Cezanne used, little squares yes, of paint. Yes, similar. Sometimes I try and force myself out of it and do something a little bit, bit bigger, but I tend to end up coming back to this dabby individual brush mark. Is it about a three-dimensionality? Does it help you with that? I find it's more a question of perhaps just the little planes of the face, the cheekbone or the lid of the eye, and the brush marks can sometimes just suggest those quite simply, if I get it right. Sometimes an artist's task is as much about identifying what makes their subject unique as it is about establishing common ground with their sitter. How it go straight up, good? Yes, yeah, so far. Because <laughs> you're from Nepal, yeah? Yes, I am. No, I went there last year to the foothills if I was in Kathmandu. Oh, actually, I do live in Kathmandu, oh, so... Oh, God, yeah. I love it. Fabulous people. <laughs> well, as long as you have the invested the nice, calm Nepalese yeah. spirit in me that clearly I took from there. <laughs> Sarita Mahajan studied for a Master's in Fine Art at Wolverhampton University. She's recently left her job in the service industry to focus on her art full-time. Hi, Sarita, you seem to be sort of feeling your way through the painting, seeing where it seems to take you, whereas with your self-portrait, I got the sense it was very well-planned, it's very meticulous. Well, with my self-portrait, I was quite stressed out, but today I just want to be very calm, like, painting. To be honest, I'm really surprised with how it's coming today. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm uh, absolutely going with the flow today. You've got a very solid, believable head. Uh -huh. Quite a grim head. I don't know what's there in the head. That's the mysterious part of it. Like, oh, yeah. is, <laughs> is that what you're going to capture? Some kind of mystery it's in mystery. his head? A grim head. That's kind of what you want to be known for as an actor. Yeah, he's got quite a grim head. Yeah, good. <laughs> The artists are almost halfway into their challenge. And for some, knowing exactly what they need from their sitter... Pam, just, just a twitch towards me. Perfect. ..is key to staying on course. The thing is, with painting, it can go just like this wrong, and then that's it. I am lost. Still trying to find the likeness, playing around, pushing the bending in all sorts of directions. I feel like I'm not on track, but yeah, just gonna keep keep going. Today's nine artists have spent the morning intently studying sitters James Nesbitt, Ray Black, and Pam Hogg. Pam? Just your bottom again, just more towards me. So that's it. Yeah, I oh, think I that's see. It. Gotcha. Yep. With two hours to go, it's our artist's turn to be scrutinised as the judges evaluate their progress so far. 
So Ray, painted by Allegra, Londona and Ryan. I think in Ray's section, all three artists have used technology and it creates a different sort of painting. So in Allegra's case, Ray's almost mid-motion, mid-fleeting smile. And Londona's used the image to get really close and tight up, almost like a snapshot. I think they've all been captivated by Ray's eyes, which is marvellous to mm. see. I think what Ryan's done is great, and I'm glad to see him working on a bigger scale. I think he's got a bit of work to do on the likeness. Mm. Jimmy being painted by Ian, Rosso and Sarita. All three artists in that section are going with the mm. flow, and I think it's fantastic. It's very exciting. In Ian's case, it's a very good self-portrait. Um, <laughs> it's, it's almost all there, but I don't see James at all in that yeah. painting. Rosso's taken an already dark background and made it even darker. Is yeah. that going to cause her problems? No, I think because there's a lightness in the way that Rosso paints that she can counteract the heaviness of the dark background. I like what Rosso's making. Sarita's really captured that fierceness. But I think at the beginning, when she had all those cool tones, it was much more serene. I'm delighted that she's now introduced that energetic colour. And finally, Pam, being painted by Eugenie Wayne and Emma, a really vivid sitter, and she's giving them something to work with. I mean, I think we're in a situation where Pam's not just the sitter, but she's the muse. Mm. I mean, they're trying to respond to something about her energy, of the kind of spirit she has. I really like what Eugenie's doing. I love that we've got something so big. It's almost over life-size. I think Eugenie's angry. She's angry that we keep on interrupting her when she just wants to get on with the business of painting, this great sitter. Wayne works in monochrome, mm. and there's something about Pam's colouring that gets lost in translation, and I'm sad that Wayne hasn't been able to introduce some of the colours into it. I don't know, I really admire Wayne. I mean, I thought he was a bit mad this morning, but now, you know, we're halfway through the day, and I'm like, OK, I'm glad you did that crazy thing. I'm with you. So Eugenie's angry and Wayne's mad. Emma... <laughs> I'm not sure that what Emma's doing at the moment is working for me. Positioning Pam right down there in the corner, I find mm. that the mm. person down there doesn't have any volume, and Pam has a real volume to her. It's weird to have such a successful background and be worried about the painting. <laughs> well, I don't think I've ever known three sitters to send our three groups of artists off on such different journeys. Mm. It'd be very interesting to see where they all end up. I want them to sort of make me look like kind of heroic, vulnerable, intelligent, attractive, lonely, strong, sexy, and young. That's all. I feel quite content, actually. I'm normally running around doing so much. So just to sit down is, is like a novelty. <laughs> Seeing London at work, she actually has been glancing at me the most. So we've definitely got a connection going on. And as for Allegra, she's looking at her phone sometimes and then looking at me sometimes. But I've just overheard that apparently my hair's blue, so I'm really interested in seeing how I look with blue hair. <laughs> yeah. Having made headway initially, one artist is now contemplating a change of direction. Jesus Christ, Ryan. Bugger. Yeah, starting again, because I'm not quite pleased with the one I've just been working on. I think the likeness is just a little bit off, and it's probably best if I just start all over again, like ripping off a blaster. <sighs> I'm starting again, because I can salvage this one. It's a bit of a roller coaster this day, but we're just taking it as we go. Still smiling, Ian, I see. Yeah, still smiling amazingly. Yes. <laughs> I think it's more James Nesbitt's stunt double, I'm afraid. Oh, OK. <laughs> That's me, actually. I do all my own stunts. <laughs> as the artists approach the final hour of their challenge, the previous three are taking their toll on the sitters. Pam, you should take a break. Just move around. More difficult than you think it's going to be. It is, and it's getting worse oh. one towards the end. Don't make yourself ill. It's, oh. It gets harder.
Whether abandoning a second attempt or persevering with a first, our artists are still finding moments to reflect whether they realize it or not. Rosso, I've been watching you paint for a little bit. You seem to spend more time looking at the painting than actually painting. Is that, is that just the stage you're at with this one? Or? Did I? I didn't realize. I thought I was painting non-stop. I wish I had spent more time actually looking at it. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know. At this stage, uh, I think I'm not aware anymore of what I'm doing. <laughs> Slightly worrying that the more Rosso is looking at her, the angrier she looks. <laughs> With 30 minutes to go, the artists who took a gamble with their portraits are discovering whether their risk has paid off. I had a little bit of a wobble, but I can actually see it coming through the canvas now. It is taking me with surprise. I'm happy with what's coming, but I don't want to overdo it. I'm just focusing on the face, pushing and pulling around some shadows. If I could start again, I would, but I've come this far and I can just bring a little bit of it back. Musician Ray Black, designer Pam Hogg, and actor James Nesbitt have been posing for almost four hours. I wish it was four more hours. Sorry for you. Uh -huh. <laughs> With just 10 minutes to go, some 11th hour decisions are yet to be made. In that last minute rush to get certain things done, it's just about taking a look at it. Wondering whether or not I'm going to work on the jacket. Ian, how are you doing? So-so. So-so, <laughs> no better than that. Just not quite there. We'll turn it round. <laughs> I'm flitting between the two because I'm trying to make them look like a pair, similar brush shapes and brush marks to sort of, in some way, bring them together. I'm not going to change anything at this point because that could go horribly wrong. <laughs> Artists, you have five minutes left. Five minutes. I'm just racing ahead to try to tie up all the other knots. <gasps> gallop, 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 gallop. Artists, your time is up. Please put down your equipment and step away from your portraits. The moment has finally come for the artists to reveal their portraits and for the sitters to choose which one they'd like to take home. You happy? I'm happy. I'm not sure anyone else will be, but I am. Well, Ray, you've had quite a day. You've, you've smiled, you've sung, and you've yeah. slept. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready to have a look? I am very. Artists, please turn your easels. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Ryan. I feel like it looks very Henry VIII. Okay. I think because the, the fur around my jacket looks like, you know those collars yeah. they used to wear? off with his head. <laughs> I love it. Londona. He's really gone for the uh, eyeshadow. I know, that's what I was going to say. My favourite thing about this is how much my eyeshadow pops. <laughs> I really like it. I have blue hair, which suits me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I really wanted my personality shown, and I feel like I see that most in this one. It looks great, I, yeah. Well, you can take one of these home with you. Which one's it going to be? I'm not going to lie, it's really hard. I'm going to go for Allegra's. <laughs> it's on Allegra. Wow. God, I'm good looking. <laughs> Sarita, yeah. I love the strokes. Thank you. I love the neck and the shoulders and... There's a wistful look. There is a wistful look, yeah. Amazing. I have to say I love this. 
I think the likeness is very good. There is a sadness, there's a lot of reflection in there, but I like it, I think it's quite strong. Thank you, Rosso. I mean, you know, I, th I think it's a fantastic bit of work, but I think Ian was worried about the likeness. Frankly, I'd quite like to look like him, to say this. <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully created, I think. Well, there they are, that's the three. Yeah. Yeah, it's difficult, you know. But I think if I was to look into the mirror today and then look beyond that into myself, I think Ross has found quite a lot of the pieces. This is the one I would choose. Aww. Well done, Ross. Thank you. Wow. Wow, God. So different. I think you've done really well. Very unexpected. Like the positioning and everything. Really Thank good. Thank you, really bold. And Wayne has given you a diptych. I never expected that at all, but I now understand why you needed that hand. I love the balance of the tones together. On to Eugenie. You can see now why wow. she kept giving you a hard time, saying, look <laughs> at me, give me that glance. Yeah, it's incredible. I feel like I literally have just sat down, looked at you, and you've painted it just like that. It's really captured a moment, hasn't it? Yeah, no, really good. Well? Oh, there's something of each of these portraits I think is fantastic. I think I'm going to go here. Oh. Emma. Thank you. While the artists leave their easels to relax outside, the judges examine their finished work. I find Allegra's portrait quite startling and a bit much. Yeah, I mean, I think what we're seeing here is, you know, Allegra, one of our younger artists, and Ray, one of our younger sitters, and it feels like colourful, poppy and vibrant. Could be an album cover. Yeah, I'm hearing I'm too old to like this sort of art. <laughs> <laughs> Londona has gone straight in for the head. I mean, it's totally uncompromising. You do get a sense of a young musician who really inhabits her world. It comes across very well. I think Brian adding that much black has caused a bit of a problem for himself, but I could forgive him it because the likeness is great. It's almost like a Neapolitan ice cream. <laughs> and it really serves to push Ray's head forward. I enjoy this picture quite a lot, actually. You can see in Eugenie's painting that she had a relationship with Pam. I think it was one of bossing her around. <laughs> but as I stand in front of this portrait, I feel a direct connection with Pam. She really fought to get this painting right, and I agree with you. I think she really caught Pam. It's interesting that two of the artists really felt compelled to put Pam's hand in. I love Wayne's monochromatic palette, but today was about a certain colour clash, and it hasn't come across for me. Emma gave us this fantastic dreamlike space above her. But the background's lovely and painterly, and the portrait of Pam is very illustrative, and there's two different paintings going on here. I really like the way Ian paints. I think he really caught James's intensity that's just a shame about the likeness i think for me it was in the mouth there is a richness and a lovely oiliness to her paint that i respond to really really well it's a forlorn painting if i was james i think i'd find it hard to live with this because <sighs> it really gets underneath the skin of who he is it's very courageous possibly, to go into the painting and not knowing what was going to happen and you get the energy of that for me, in this section, they've potentially not nailed the likeness, but I really like them as paintings. Yeah. The judge's next task is to narrow down today's nine artists to a short list of three. We agree on those two. Yeah, Absolutely. we do. Absolutely. So we just have to discuss these, these two. These two, OK. The first artist to be shortlisted is Ryan Jowett. The second artist 
Rosso Spotto. Oh. The third artist to be shortlisted, Eugenie Vronskaya. Oh, thank you. I think the children will be proud of what I've done today. You know, that's what I try and instill to the, the young people. You know, you pick up the brush, you do the best you can, and then you stand back from it and just, you know, be proud of what you've done. Well, a democratic choice. We have one portrait of each sitter in the final. I think what was interesting is that each one of these sitters and their backgrounds was really distinct, and I felt like it was a really strong mood in each section. There was something about Rosser's portrait of James that we thought captured the mood of the man. What is interesting is that the mood of her self-portrait and the painting of James Day are both one of melancholia. Mm. It's encouraging that Rosso knows what she wants to do. It's got narrative, it's psychologically interesting. Eugenie gave us that sideways glance mm. from Pam. Yeah, I think she's happy to be playful and just not quite have a sort of exact formulaic way of doing things. There's a confidence to her in that she's left all that stuff yeah. undone. Whereas Ryan decided to fill in Ray's jacket. Was that a mistake? I think he lost his nerve a bit. And it's a pity because the way the head is nestled in that collar is just sublime. But you get the feeling that they were really connected somehow. Mm. So there we go. We're looking at three artists. There can only be one winner. Mm. I'm pretty clear on who I think is the winner. I just have to see if the other two judges agree. Uh -huh. Rosso, Eugenie and Ryan, well done for making the shortlist. You've all proved your talent, but sadly, only one of you can go through to the semi-final. The artists that the judges have selected displayed a fearlessness in their approach, which created an authentic and compelling portrait. That artist is... Eugenie Vronskaya. I feel amazing, happy, tired. <laughs> Pam is a great sitter because there was so much character in her kind of pose and look and everything else. I couldn't give it up. I really like Eugene's portrait since the very moment that I saw it. She completely got the sitter. Well done to her. We've all done some very good work today, and Eugenie's piece is no exception, and I wish her all the best. It's been a cracking day, cracking experience. What I loved about Eugenie's work today was the rigor she brought to bear. I'm fascinated by what she's going to come up with next, because you know it's going to ring with authenticity. She can feel what she's looking for from the sitter, and she gets it. You know, it's kind of embarrassing if you told a few people you're doing it, then to ring them and go, no, I just didn't get it. So I'm like, phew, I don't have to do that. 